Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday I posted a video that's a little different for my channel. Uh, what I did was I went to a sculpture park that is about maybe a half hour or so from where I live. It's a couple big fields that have a lot of sculptures in it, really. And I uh, took video of me walking around with my Nikon Z7 II and Nikon 24-200 lens. And I just took photos, and along the way, I explained a little bit of what I was doing. Well, the videos really got barely any views, but I've received a lot of questions about things I talked about or did in that video, or things I showed in that video, and I wanted to try to answer them today in this video. If you haven't seen the video I'm talking about, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. All right, now the main question, well, two main questions I've been getting. Did I like use a polarizer or something? The skies are also blue and vivid. And the answer is no. I'm going to show you how I process the images uh, for that. The other uh, thing is in the video I mentioned that I was grabbing my exposure from the sky. And people asked me about that. And I'll try to explain that a little better today. And finally... Uh, in the video, whenever I took a photo, I would show the photo and I had it set up in such a way that you would see the photo and then to the side of the photo you'd see the, the focal length and exposure information that I, you know, for that specific photo. And they were asking me how I did that. So I'm going to show you all of that now. Now let's first talk about that last thing. What I'm talking about is this. Um, when I would take a photo or picture in that video, um, all of a sudden would this something like this would flash on the screen and on the left hand side would be the exposure info and focal length and if I used a preset it would be listed there and then right here where this gray area is is where the photo resides and I created a template for this in Photoshop because I knew because I want to do more of these videos that it would be very time consuming to construct this by hand for every single image for every single video. So I have two templates. One is for a horizontal image and the other one is for a vertical image and they're pretty much laid out the same way. What we have to begin with is just a background that is um, a resolution of 4K because my videos, uh, at least these videos I'm doing, uh, work the scene videos, I'm calling them, are 4K videos. So this is 3840 by 2160. Then what I did is I put a gradient on it and I just got the gradient tool. I hit the G key on my keyboard and if you just hold the shift key down and then just draw straight down, you'll draw a perfectly vertical line. And I drew a gradient like that, but I didn't want a real dramatic gradient. Uh, so what I did was, is I zoomed out by hitting Command minus on my Mac a few times. It's Control minus on a PC. I had a perfectly white piece of paper to start, hold the Shift key down, and pull and down like that. And I got a real gradual gradient. Now I'm doubling up, obviously, because I have a gradient on this already. So that's how I added the gradient. And um, I reversed it, or had it non-reversed, whatever, to fit. I think it was reversed, actually, right? Let me double check so I'm not giving you a right. No, I had it. I had the reverse off. So let's undo that. So I had reverse off. So it was more like that. All right. So I did um, that for the background part of the um, template. Then what I did was is I put a gray box on it. Inside of this gray box would reside the actual image. And to this gray box, I added a drop shadow. So I just went down to layer style and added a drop shadow to it. So it gives it just some depth. And then I put the text on it. And I put two different text fields. Uh, the first text field I put was whether or not, you know, or what the exposure info was. So it's right here. And I just have some dummy information in the template there. So it's, you know, taking up the space. And then I would come in and I would double click like I just did on the actual text layer. It would highlight everything. Then I could come in here and I could change something. So if I really shot at F11, I could change it and come in here and change whatever I need. Now, if I used a preset, I could then double click on the T 
of the layer for the preset and it would highlight that and I could change that if I need to. If I didn't use a preset, I would just turn that layer off. So I would just have this. So that's really all I did to construct the template uh, for uh, my images. Then what I do is I go into Lightroom and I process the images. And uh, people were asking me, what do you mean by exposing for the sky? Well, let's just look at a few sample images. These are raw files that aren't processed. And you could see that every single one of them by itself is underexposed. What I did was, is I would focus. I have my camera set up so it uses back button focusing. And if I half press the shutter, it will not try to achieve focus. So I'm using a single point focus. And I would put that point in this case, like over these mushroom, this mushroom sculpture. I would focus on that with the back button. Once I let go of the back button, since I was using um, AF-S, single focus, not continuous focus, um, it would achieve focus and my camera would beep. So I knew it achieved focus. Now, when I let go of that button, and if I half press the shutter, my camera will not try to re-achieve focus. Next, though, after I did focus where I wanted to focus, I would grab an exposure. And when I say that, now my, I have my camera set up, so it's using spot metering. That means just wherever my focus point is, that is where it's going to grab the metering information from. And it grabs the metering information when I half press the shutter. So what I do is I would focus with the back button, in this case, let's say on these mushrooms. Then I would tilt my camera up at the sky, put my focus point over the sky, but I wouldn't touch the back focus button, I would half press the shutter and it would grab an exposure. And I could see in the viewfinder, the entire image would get dark. Then what I would do is I would keep my finger half pressed on the shutter and recompose. Now I already focused, so I don't have to refocus. I would just recompose the scene and then fully press the shutter to take the shot. And that's what I would do. And that's what I... Um, that's what I physically did when I was referring to I'm grabbing the exposure from the sky and that's how I did it then you know I'd come in and process an image in Lightroom and let's just process this one and people were saying your skies were so like vivid blue did you use a polarizer or what did you do I received more than one email about that uh, no, I was just lucky. This day, the skies were spectacular. They were just great skies. And since I exposed for the sky, none of the sky was blown out. So I had great detail in every single image that had clouds in it. Um, so it just worked out well. And then, you know, I was in a real hurry to process these images. So I didn't, I didn't really labor over this. I just uh, do what I normally do. I open up shadows, bring down highlights. I hold the option key in on my Mac, Alt on a PC, click on whites. I'd get a white point. I usually don't like to clip at all, but since these metallic mushrooms were, you know, super bright, I'm going to clip a little there. Nothing I could do about that. That's fine. Again, I'd hold that option key on my Mac in, Alt on a PC, and bring it down to get a black point, and then I kind of readjust as needed. I would add a little texture, add a little clarity, and then I typically don't use saturation. I prefer to go to the HSL color tab, but because I was in a hurry, I actually just moved the saturation slider or the vibrant slider on some images. I just moved the saturation slider to the right. And you can see how dark and vivid that sky is. Again, I did not use a polarizer. This is just straight from the camera. Then on some images, I added a vignette. Most of them I did not because I just didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't have time. And if I remembered, I often forgot to tell you the truth because I was doing this so fast trying to get all these images processed. I would sharpen. But I would say on 75% of the images, I didn't even sharpen them or add any noise reduction. Now, the A7 II shot at ISO 64 has no noise anyway, so I didn't really have to worry about any noise reduction. So once I had an image processed, you could see how fast I did it, right? Um, then I would export it. And um, I always use keyboard shortcuts, so I hit Shift-Command-E on my Mac to export it. Now I set up two 
user presets to make this easy. Um, I have one for a horizontal image and one for a vertical image. The main thing about these presets is they size the image so it will fit perfectly in that gray box that I have that I showed you a second ago in Photoshop. So anyways, I would click on, in this case, it's a horizontal image, and I didn't crop. Um, I cropped a little bit on a couple of the images, but I kept the same three to two aspect ratio. I didn't get an odd crop. So that's why I could use these, um, these uh, export presets. I didn't have to modify anything. So then I would give it a name. Um, what I did was I processed everything. So I had all the images I was going to use processed and then I exported them all at the same time. And I just, I called it something like exported images or something like that. And then I had them set up so it's a sequence, so it'll number each one in sequence, and I would export them all at once. And you could see that this user preset has the long edge set to 2,903 pixels. That is what fits perfectly in that gray box, so I don't have to resize anything, and that's all I do. And then I export it to the desktop. So I'll export this to show you. All right, so once it's exported, all right, now I, I even close down Lightroom. And then um, I'm back into Photoshop. So now I'll, I'll get rid of this vertical one. We're not going to use that in this video. So what we'll do now is open up that image that I just exported. It's on my desktop. It's right here, export one, and right there. And there it is. Now, this is how I do this super fast. What I'll do is I'll go back to my template. I hold the command key on, in on my Mac, it's control if it's a PC, and I click on the layer that has the gray box. And what it does is it puts a selection around it. The reason why I do that, because then I go over here and I get the move tool, hit the V key on your keyboard for the move tool, V is in victory. Then I just click and I drag it up to the tab that has my template, hold it over the gray box. Now, because it has a selection around it, when I hold the shift key in, it will automatically drop my image directly on the gray box, perfectly centered, just like that. I hit Command D to deselect, and then I'll go up to my text, whatever text, let's say I did not use a preset on this, right? So I keep that off. Then I'll go over here and I'll put the exposure info and how I closed it down, I shouldn't have. Um, but I then, I, had, I kept Lightroom open before. And then I look at the exposure info in the top left-hand corner of Lightroom. And I'll just come back in and retype or, or type in. This was 1 400th of a second F8 ISO 64, 24 millimeters, right? So then I'll come over here. I'll double click on this so I get all that hot highlighted. Then I come in here and I put 1 400th of a second. It was F8. I like, I, I don't know, I put 8.0, I don't know why. ISO 64 at 24 millimeters. Right that. So I'm actually done with this, this template that I put in the video. So when you're watching the video, after I snap this photo, this would flash on screen so you could see it. Uh, then I export it out of Photoshop. Again, I use keyboard shortcuts, uh, Shift, Option, Command, W on my Mac. It's Shift, Alt, Control, W on a PC. Or you could just go up to a file, export, export as, and I export it as a JPEG, full resolution, 4K resolution, don't want to change that, and I just click export down here, and then let's say I'll do this uh, to my desktop, and I rename it, um, whatever this, this was, like export one, or something, whatever, but I'll just put um, slide one, like that. And that's how I kind of uh, made it, or I automated the process so everything was a lot faster and a lot easier. And then in the video, I would just drop this in the video timeline at the point where I need it to be displayed. And I would display it for five seconds. And I'd have, um, I'd have a transition at the beginning and end, so it would fade in and fade out. So I did that on every single image that you see. And you could see that the sky is really just it was a great day it was just very lucky that i was there on a day like this where the sky was um was spectacular for lack of a better term so that's how i 
do those things I did in that video I posted yesterday that's barely getting any views. I'd like uh, for you to check it out because I think that is a direction uh, my channel will be going into a little more, not exclusively, but a little more. I'll be doing more videos like that. Uh, so I'll have a description uh, or I'll have a link to that video in the description below this video. And I'd appreciate it if you um, watched it. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.